Hi guys, my name is Daniel, and what you're about to watch in this video is a demonstration of how ZenServer makes it easy to manage a clustered environment. ZenServer's architecture is based on a decentralized management system, comprised of identical components that ensure high availability and made to support cloud environments. ZenServer uses a database backend to store information about the installed servers in the cluster. The database stores the configuration settings blueprint, which contains the desired configuration of all the ZenServer components and serves as a reference point for all the servers in the cluster. The configurations stored on the blueprints range from applications to virtual hosts, libraries, and PHP settings. So any detected changes to the central blueprints are automatically applied individually by each server in the cluster. Unexpected changes, like if a configuration file was edited on a certain server and not via the ZenServer UI, are automatically detected and reported. Of course, the beauty of this architecture stems from the fact that ultimately each server is responsible for itself. It reports its own status and takes care of its own configuration updates. By the way, all the cluster management actions you're about to watch are web service enabled and can be fully automated. So if you're designing a continuous delivery process, this fits in nicely. Okay, enough theory for now. Let's start our demonstration. I'm using a single Zen server, but I'm looking to add some firepower to my production environment. And to do this, I need to create a cluster and add some servers. So I'm going to the manage servers page under servers. And here I'm going to start by clicking the Join Cluster button in the action bar. In the Join Cluster dialog that pops up, I'm going to first name the server. We can leave the server's IP address as is. And next I'm going to enter the IP of the server hosting the database. In this case, it's the IP of this very same server. Now, since this is the first server of the cluster, I'm going to be creating the cluster database. So first I need to name it and then enter the default admin MySQL user credentials. Great. Clicking join cluster, I'm notified of a new Zen user and password that were created for accessing the cluster database. Clicking OK, the database is created and cluster configurations are applied. Cool, we've created the cluster. Let's start optimizing our production environment by making some initial configurations. So for starters, I'm going to change the PHP display errors directive to on. Now these configurations are saved on the cluster blueprint, like we explained before, and they'll be applied to each server added to the cluster. And the same goes for applications. Apps are added to all existing servers in the cluster and any new servers. So let's also deploy an application to demonstrate this point. So we've changed some configurations and deployed an application. Now let's start adding some servers to the cluster. There are a number of ways to do this, one being from the ZenServer launch wizard. The wizard's displayed after installing ZenServer and takes you through some basic bootstrap configurations. On the second dialog of this wizard, you can choose which kind of profile you want to launch ZenServer with. So in this case, I'm going to select a cluster production environment and click next. On the next dialog, we're going to enter the details of the cluster we're about to join. The name and IP address of the server already entered, so I'm going to enter the IP of the server hosting the database, the database name, and user credentials. Once we've done this, we can click Next, install the default PHP libraries, and click Launch on the summary dialog to launch Zen Server. The server's launched, and we're going to log in using our cluster user credentials. All the cluster configurations we applied before that are stored on the blueprint are applied to the new member of the cluster. And if we go to the apps page in the server, we can see the application we deployed earlier on the cluster. Another way to join the cluster is to add an external server that hasn't been launched yet from inside the cluster UI. And to do this, we're going to go back to the Manage Servers page and click the Add Server button in the action bar. In the Add Server dialog, I'm going to fill in the details of the server I want to add to the cluster, its name, an IP. I'm 
and then click Add Server. Cool, I've now got a cluster with three servers. Now you might have noticed that when we first joined the cluster, we got a notification telling us that session clustering is disabled. Clicking details, we get sent to the session clustering page, where I'm going to click this link at the top of the page to enable the feature. Well, now what's session clustering? Basically, it's a high availability session management system for sharing session data between servers in a cluster making sure that sessions aren't lost in case of a system failure. The next thing I'd like to show you is what happens when the configurations of one of the members of the cluster are not aligned with the central cluster blueprint. So what I'm going to do is manually change the value of the display errors directive for one of the servers in the cluster. Done. Now let's see what Zen server does. We get a notification informing us that Zen servers identified a configuration's mismatch. If we click details, we're led to the servers page where we get a message informing us of the configuration mismatch on the server in question. So you can either apply the new configurations to the entire cluster or revert the server to the current cluster configurations. Now, say you have to take down a server, say for maintenance reasons. All you have to do, after taking the server off the load balancer of course, is select the server from the servers list and click the disable button in the actions column on the right. Now when a server is disabled, it performs what we call a graceful shutdown, transferring all the sessions stored on the server to one of the other servers in the cluster, thus guaranteeing that session data is not lost and clicking the enable button brings the server back online. Now actions we perform in the cluster are recorded and you can see the details on the audit trail page. Okay guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you want more info on how to work with the Zen server cluster, please refer to the online docs on zend.com.